Top of my news here with Lee Meehan, uh, head trainer of CMC in Lethbridge. Lee, you just uh, beat your first UFC veteran, Ron Faircloth, in uh, like a minute. Talk us through the fight. Well, I knew I took the fight on short notice and coming off some injuries and knew I didn't have the condition to go a long time, which I never planned on doing that in my fights anyways. I knew he had good wrestling, ton of experience, so I was going out there to hit him hard. And I know if I can land some hands on him, it doesn't matter who they are, if I hit him, they're going to go to sleep. So I just put it to him right away and uh, he shelled up a bit and that's the biggest mistake you can make and, and he went to sleep, so. I know, like, I'm just a huge fan. I, I saw you probably in your last three fights against Kyle Cardo, Jeff Monson, and, and now Ron Faircloth. And man, when you swing, you swing with bad, bad intentions. And, and that's what we saw tonight. Yeah, 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 I mean, if you're gonna hit a guy, hit him hard. He's gotta react to it, whether it lands clean or not. It gives a, it gives a timing control in the fight. And that's why I try to teach my guys whether they're using the speed or the power or, or you know, some tactical move is to gain timing control in the fight. And I know if, you, if I hit you hard and you off step a little bit or shell up, that gives me time to set up the next shot. So, and that's what happened tonight. As soon as I saw him shell, I knew it was light. So something would land eventually if I threw a big combination. So, yeah. so let's, let's go back a week from now. You get a call probably from Sandy Bowman. Uh, you know, today's your birthday. Happy birthday. You, uh, you know, your grandfather. Uh, your son's uh, training for the biggest fight of his, uh, his career against Marius Aramskis. Uh, you're his trainer. You have a show in a week. You know, why take the fight? Uh, doing a favor for Sandy, really. I mean, Sandy's brought his guys down to the Rumble in the Cage many times over the past several years, and he's always been good to me and my team helping us out. And when he was stuck, you know, I just, uh, you know, I want to fight. I love scrapping. Um, you know, again, like the business side of things is I can't afford to get hurt, so I can't train the guys. I got a show next weekend. I got VIP table people calling me like crazy. So there's a lot going on, but that makes it even more exciting. There's no, there's no time for to worry about stuff that's going on. You live in the moment for every second. You train for your fight, you fight, you do the business side of things, you train the fighters. I'd rather be busy 24 hours a day and, and loving every minute of it. And again, owed Sandy a big favor for all the stuff he's done for me, so I was glad I could come up here and put on a show for everybody. Yeah, and your next show, your show, Rumble in the Cage, um, what is it, 30, no, 43. 43. Yeah. Yep, um, I guess June 4th in Tabor. Yeah. Uh, why don't you talk us about the fights there and who's on the card? Uh, it's going to be a great show. Uh, a lot of the new guys fighting. Uh, Peter Neufeld, a uh, great exciting fighter at uh, 155. We've got Spencer Rohovi fighting. Tim Tamaki, crowd favorite. Um, Sean Merkel. Uh, just uh, Brandon Black here from Tabor and Ian Olin from Tabor. Uh, so it's going to be a great uh, hometown uh, show. The people in Tabor are phenomenal for supporting events. Uh, I love doing shows there. They've got a great arena for doing events. And uh, you know, a little more work because it's a little bit out of town. It's 30 minutes from Lethbridge, but you know, it's worth it when you see the crowd packed in there and everyone's having a good time. Well, uh, that's awesome. And I think the Rumble in the Cage cards are the only cards that the CMC guys get actual uh, notice uh, a couple months before that they're actually going to fight. I think you guys take everything else on short notice. It just yeah. Well, you know, I switch the, the fight team names out there to promoters, and they don't book us until they're stuck and they need someone last minute. So. You know, we're ready to fight. My guys are training hard all the time, and if it works out like I can help another promoter out, I'll do it. Um, but it's just great when they can fight at home. I had uh, a great main event for our show with Jordan, my son Jordan, for the main event, but then the score won in the fight um, in Mississauga. And uh, so we took that fight because it was a great fight for him, so. Yeah, and let's talk about that with Mary Saramskis. You know, you, you know, Jordan's beaten uh, Joe Riggs, Cato Allen, um, uh, Josh Berkman, Josh Berkman uh, at Reckoning. You know, he's on a real roll here. Now he's taking on Marius Aramskis. Uh, you know, why don't you talk about this fight and any plans you guys may have uh, to take out a dream champion? Uh, you know, I think Jordan Skills can beat him standing and on the ground. And um, we know he's tough and that's what we want. We want tough fights. There's no point in fighting soft fights and, and having a soft, uh, you know, vision of yourself that you're good when you haven't fought anyone good. So we know that if he keeps beating top guys, when he does get called to the UFC, um, he'll be ready to fight those guys and we'll have no trouble once he gets there running through the division till the top So that's our goal. Well, and he's running through the best right now that are outside of the USC for sure You know Lee, thanks for your time. You know, happy birthday. You turned 44. Yeah, like, you're a grandfather You beat your first UFC champ after after losing to like Monson and and Sojinski and, and great guys like that yeah. um, and, and, and best of luck on June 10th for Jordan. All right. Thank you